It's said that the genius can take the complicated and make it simple, and that the idiot takes the simple and makes it complicated. I want you to take a look at this for yourself and see which of these two individuals is the genius and which one's the idiot. What is next? The Bedini motor. The Bedini motor. You know, the Bedini motor is like the holy grail of the free energy freaks. Hey, everybody. Jeff Williams here with AskJeffWilliams.com. MIT's Dr. Geo Holmesy has been helping the guys by assembling the contraption. And with his pedigree, they're quickly in business. Free energy, man. Here we go. So what we did is um, we decided to download the, um, the blueprints to the Bedini motor and try to build one ourselves here in the shop. It couldn't be simpler. A battery drives a motor which spins up a flywheel, which charges wire coils, which in turn recharge the battery. And bingo, a perpetual motion or over-unity machine. It's important to keep an open mind and realize that all the principles that drive the over-unity machines operate outside of everything you've ever heard about science. <laughs> See if there's any truth to this thing, uh, as far as charging batteries, and some of them even claim to have over unity. If you understand what that is, so we uh, got the blueprints, put it together, and voila, it does seem to work. Activate the modulator. Modulator activated. A modulator switches the motor on and off, so preserving power while the flywheel keeps on spinning. In theory, replenishing the battery. Okay, it's spinning up. And here it is, in a nutshell. Um, we're running two coils, and here's our rotor in the center, and our circuitry is in the back, and the, um, the rotor is nothing more than a little scooter wheel that we bought at Big Five. And then we put our magnets here in the end. I can hear it getting slower. <laughs> yeah, it seems to be. <laughs> I don't think I need a battery. meter for this one. In a sudden burst of free energy, the Bedini machine runs down. Sounds like my grandfather. Oh, getting sick. It's draining more from the battery on each cycle than it's putting back in when it recharges. That's the one big problem with perpetual motion machines. They're not perpetual. Over unity, huh? That's an efficiency of over 100%. Kind of makes you feel all warm and fuzzy inside, don't it? If you mean it makes me feel like I feel about the Easter Bunny or Santa Claus, yeah, that kind of warm and fuzzy, because it's a fantasy! Um, in the front here, you've got your two transistors, one for each coil, and, of course, the potentiometer, which acts like a throttle gate. Um, then over here, you've got your two lead-acid batteries. Uh, one's a primary, and one's a secondary or a charger. Um, over here, you can see our voltmeters. Uh, this is for the charger. Uh, we're running 12.21, and it's still climbing, as you can see. It's trying to climb up to 2.2, and then it'll keep going up past that. Our primary battery has been sitting at 12.14, and has been doing so for most of the day. Um, so, in essence, yes, it does work. Uh, in order to build this little guy, though, it's really not that complicated. So the lesson that I take from this video is that you can't trust national or international media to tell the truth about anything that could have a real financial repercussion on the global system. And you can't trust a professor from MIT to tell the truth about energy systems that could change the way that we get energy ourselves.